instead of saying I'm a political artist, I, I like to believe that I'm part of a politicized community. It's never like, let the Muslims speak or let the Arabs speak. It's always somebody telling us who we are. Besides the guys that Indiana Jones killed in the movies and, uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger shot up with millions of bullets, there was never really an actor from my community that I felt represented by, nor was there a musician. But now in our generation is when you start seeing people from our community break out into big roles in cinema and film. I wish I had that. The people that made me feel that were people within the hip hop community because they didn't necessarily show me that I could do it, but they said you could try to do it, and if you do it, just do it honest and do you. Don't do anybody else. People assume I'm very religious because of the kind of things that I wear and the reminders that I put for myself in my music. I definitely view Islam as a way of life and like a, a science of living, and there's codes in there that we still haven't decoded in the Quran, and. Alhamdulillah, for example, which was the first song that I put out as a solo artist, it wasn't just Muslims in that video, but people assumed it was. But Alhamdulillah is an Arabic word saying like, all grace be to God, thank you to God for anything that's in my life. And that could mean you are of any denomination, of any religion, of any experience of life, right? Wish I could take it back and lift the home, make a track, erase the past that we missing. Alhamdulillah. People have told me that they've converted. People have told me that, you know, the music has helped them get through hard times. So it's, that's why it's there for, that's what hip hop did for me. So I'm gonna put it in my music and put my religion in there too. We didn't have a template to follow as young Arabs as to how to deal with the stuff that we were dealing with in, on a day to day, right? Around 9-11 and after that, we used to get things spray painted on our house in Canada or people telling us to go back home, immigrant, the same thing that happens today. It's not like it's changed much. But then uh, as I got older, it became a big part of my identity and it, it forced me to delve into the history of my country and find out why the situation is the way it is in Iraq and what the relationship of America to Iraq is and really what are the priorities here. And it really just uh, helped me open my eyes to the faults and the positives on either side of my cultures, right? I just want to do justice to the injustice that was done to the generations of my family and the many families of where I'm from. And you can never bring the people that died back. You can never get back the history that was stolen, but hopefully be able to bring some sort of justice through media. And again, to, to carve out space for youth to feel secure enough to share their story from an honest place. We're diverse, we're everywhere. We are human. I mean, as, as silly as that is, that we have to say that. There is no escaping the non-homogenization of society. North America and Canada and big parts of Europe are made by the fact that immigrants live in these countries. And until the grandmaster narrative of society accepts this reality because it takes up some of their own personal cultural space, then the world will not be a better place. And we're gonna keep knocking on that door until the door doesn't exist anymore, you know? Hey guys, I'm Hunter, the creator and producer of Scene. Thank you so much for watching this episode. It's such an important time to be spotlighting the game changers in the arts and entertainment. If you want to binge some more episodes with maybe a bag of potato chips or something, please like and subscribe down below. Bye.